Be sure to like this video and comment below if you have any questions on building this dodecagram coil. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is a helix stencil or a protractor that will help you create the points that you need for creating the coil. I created my own little sketched up sheet here for specifically size coils, so that way I don't have to worry about measuring out larger coils. Makes things easier. So what I'll do next is I am going to mark the points at 30 degrees apart real quick, and then I will show you how to create the grooves on the coil frame. Once you're done, you should have a result that looks like this. And then what you're going to want to do next is use a Dremel tool to cut out little one millimeter grooves on each point that you just marked. So I'm going to do that right now. First, make sure you have safety glasses before you do it. All right, so once you are done, you should have a result that looks like this. So that way you have little slots for your winding layers to be stacked in each point. Now I'm going to show you how to, how, the, how to wire the coil. And how I'm going to do that is by using 0.3 millimeter wire. And then I will show you how to go from 0.1 to 0.2 using every fifth point jump to create the incomplete circle, which appears to be a star. What I do is I take my starting point here at one and I go from over top. So I overlap from the top of the frame right here. And then I go down through and underneath. And then I create a loop at phase 0.5. Going from one, I count five more times. One, two, three, four, five. And then I wrap it at point two. And then I keep doing this until I have all 12 points. And I'll do that right now and show you what it turns out to look like. All right, so this is what it should look like after your first layer is done. And now I will wrap five more layers on the coil and then I will show you what kind of characteristics it has physical property wise. Once you are done with the layers, it'll be more filled out and it will look somewhat like this. And if it doesn't look like this, feel free to send me a message and I'll show you the reason why that you're not getting the same exact outcome as me. These coils are very interesting when it comes to the physical phenomenon they produce. They actually form a halfway point at the front and back that is perfectly divided and they, they will act as an electromagnet. So the north field will be on top, the south field will produce on the bottom. And on top of that, you will notice that there will be a very strong Gauss field at the center of the coil, similar to a 360 degree coil, but these coils can be structured much more differently than a standard 360 degree coil. I've also considered connecting one of these to a bunch of balloons and connecting one end of my coil lead to a spool of wire and sending it up into the sky just to see how much atmospheric electricity I can gather because I'm going to show you right now a simulated version of what I think would happen if I sent this coil into the higher atmosphere where there is thousands of volts worth of potential. Using this six watt plasma ball, I am able to simulate the high voltage on a small scale using only six watts input. And I am also able to collect that radiant voltage through the center of this coil and light a light bulb with it. And I will show you how I do it right now. So the only thing you really have to do is set these coil on top of the plasma ball. You will notice the plasma will redirect into the ball. So picture the higher atmosphere being the high voltage conductor loaded with 
infinite amounts of voltage potential. Now, since this is resonating at a 20 kilohertz frequency and it is permeating all conductive metals, you can find different voltage potentials as a result. So the same thing is happening with the sky and the biggest conductive negative conductor you can use to collect atmospheric electricity with is the ground. So for this little simulated test run, I am using my body as the ground. So my body is interacting with the plasma. Vice versa, it is causing me to resonate slightly with the plasma ball because of the capacitance in my body. This allows me to power this light bulb once I touch it to this wire on the beginning lead of my coil. And the reason why The reason why that is happening is because the EMF is actually rectifying into a DC potential. The EMF coming off my body is creating a potential conductor within the circuit. And so it rectifies the AC into DC and I'm able to power this LED bulb as a result. So if I simulated this same concept, by sending this into the higher atmosphere, I would be able to collect a lot of power from the higher atmosphere and send it wherever I want. Now I will show you how this coil can operate as an electromagnet as well. So this will give you an idea of how to turn it into a potential air core step-up transformer for higher frequency alternating current signals. All right, so for this test run, I will show you how the magnetic field reacts on two 1.2 centimeter diameter neodymium magnets. And I will use this 12 volt 9 watt adapter as the power source to create the electromagnetic field. So give me one second to plug it in and I will show you how it operates. All right, so I have my magnet placed right here and I will show you what happens when I place the center of the coil over the magnet and I connect the 9 watts. see that so it's really nice about this design the coil gets a tad bit warm but not very hot to the point where it's going to burn the frame or anything like that and it's a very interesting experiment to show how the magnetic field lines operate on the coil So I hope you like this little video demonstration on how to build a dodecagram coil and I hope you liked how it performed with its physical properties. So if you like seeing videos like this, be sure to like, share, and comment below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and peace.